Why was the employee fired from the orange juice factory? Can I know why? He worked for an Apple State. He worked for a what? An Apple State. Apple and, and an Apple Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> So you dropped your purse, you didn't know where it was. 
Can you think of any public building that doesn't have a lost and found? <laughs> no. We have one here. We have a large lost and found, actually. <coughs> think about what that experience is like, and then how it makes us feel when we lose something. We're worried. That's a thing. We, can, we only think about that one thing. We're anxious about it. Sometimes we're sad. But it also makes us determined, doesn't it? And focused. And that's what this, these three parables are about. These are people who are focused because they know that something isn't right and they're trying to put it right. How does it feel when we're missing something and we can't find it? We answer the call. That's why churches have bells. I, I rarely open up the front door when the bells are ringing at 915. Larry Baker uh, rings our bell at 915 every morning to bring people to church. And people don't realize sometimes uh, the bells are there to bring people in. The, the church bell is an example of a bell that you would put on a sheet so that you would be able to find it. Now here's the other thing is that we don't like to admit that we're lost. <laughs> now, none of you have had this dispute in your family, have you? When you're on vacation? <laughs> and they say, which way are you going? Do you know where you're going? <laughs> That's annoying, right? It's really annoying <laughs> when somebody points out that we're lost. We don't want to admit it. We don't want to admit there might be something lacking in our mind in our concentration, right? We don't want to admit it. And so we find that Jesus is the one that calls us back. And why do we care about these things? Because we know that God cares about us. Now think about what happens when you're one of the 99. You don't want the shepherd to leave you and go find that one that's always causing trouble, that's always going off the way, there's always reasons why we shouldn't try to bring people back because it's their own darn fault, right? You didn't read the map. You didn't set the GPS right. It's our experience of being lost. Last week, we had a, a, the, uh, it was the first time in worship that we read the whole book of the Bible. We read the book of Philemon. And um, there we had a slave named Onesimus. How many of you were here last, last Sunday? A bunch of you were here last Sunday. Do you remember what the name Onesimus, Onesimus means? I heard so many things. Useful. 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 Right. Here was a slave. His name was Onesimus, and his name meant useful. And Paul makes this play on words that once he was useless to you, and now he's useful. And not only is the slave owner, Philemon, before he was useless because he was a slave owner, but now if he frees this guy, he's going to be useful. And Paul becomes useful because now he's got a task in life because he's found this person who's lost in the world and he's bringing him back into fellowship. So isn't that uh, the thing that you tell someone who's standing around when you're working? Can't you make yourself free? Useful? Can anybody ever say that to you? <laughs> Can you make yourself useful? The other word that I want to point out in the passage today, as we close, is the word we find in our passage today, celebrate. Every time that someone is found in these three little parables of Jesus, the person who finds them says, come and celebrate with me. This uh, in our story today when the sheep is found. He goes out to get the shepherd and says, hey, come celebrate with me. When the woman finds a coin, she rounds up her neighbor and says, come celebrate with me. When the forgiving father sees his prodigal son coming back, he says, come celebrate with me. What if we put that word at the heart of the church, that word celebrate? What if we put that word at the heart of our lives to celebrate, we would have our mission. And what is our mission here at Trinity? To
This is a natural consequence of life. We lose things. And we lose our way. And sometimes we don't like to admit it. Spiritual realities that we don't like to admit that we're lost. That there's something in our lives that's missing. But yet it's at the heart of everything we do in the life of the church. That we believe in community because our lives as they are by ourselves there's something missing. And so everyone here has had experience of something being lost, of something that's not quite right in our lives because it's not there anymore. And God calls us to be about the search together. Just as Paul started, just as we can see, the way people knew Jesus was as a good shepherd who reached out and included people. We also are called by God and our mission is to celebrate 